Hey guys, welcome back. Skitzone episode 15 topic today is a quick one, and that is generating reports automatically in assembly. Before we get into that topic though, let me share with you my quarterly financial statement. Um, my three main physical assets, I have a 2018 Ford Focus SE hatchback in hot pepper red. I have 28 Quinoa strawberry plants, uh, highly recommend that variety. And I have a wife, I believe she's Caucasian. Um, value of those assets is probably around 15 grand. That's mostly the car, to be honest. Um, balances for the accounts, 2.9K for me, 1.7K for my wife. Our crack house equity in the bubble is 18K. It's gonna crash. Um, retirement, obviously, yeah, funny. Um, conclusion, we already knew this, no big deal. With that out of the way, reports. Why are reports important? Well, in this series, we're going to do a lot of analysis, scientific computing, and sometimes I feel that it's better to represent the data in a concise report like the one I just showed you instead of just a matrix output to the console. You know, we're visual entities. We <laughs> we interpret visual data, I think, better than numerical data sometimes. So yeah, that's the main reason. And in my opinion, although it may be cringe, I think HTML is probably the best format for a report like that. Why do I think that? Well, one, it's plain text. So it's easy to write, easy to open, easy to read. Any text editor can open this kind of a file. And it's portable. So Pretty much everything is a browser nowadays, like it says in the third point. Everything can open this. Your toaster can open this kind of a file, basically. Um, and it can be sent around, email, on a flash drive, on a, you know, whatever you want. You can make this a highly portable report file. Customizable. You can have custom elements. You can have text, tables, lists, pictures, videos, everything inside there. Custom JavaScript. That's all possible. It's super simple to generate. Um, if you if you take a look at the code in this video, it it's literally like just printing to a file. I mean, it, we've done this in like one of the first few videos in this series. And lastly, if down the road you have to change something and you have the report file, well, you can open the report file and make a change there really quick without having to rerun all of the the code. Now, the beauty of an automatic report is that you can rerun the code. You can tweak a parameter here and there. I can go back. I can tweak, you know, my checking account. I can tweak the values in this scatter plot and rerun the report and it will automatically regenerate this file. But, you know, if you have a simple thing you have to change on your computer without the the binary that was used to create this particular report or the source code or whatever, you can make that change in the text file. So for these reasons, among others, I think that HTML is an awesome format for reports like this. For example, you can't edit a PDF file very easily, but you can edit an HTML file. Okay. Um, as you can tell by now in this series, I'm very partial towards linked lists, and that's how I think I want to encode this kind of report structure. So basically, in an HTML file, there's a bunch of elements, and this is basically just uh, an encoding of a, a linked list of those elements. And so you may have a, a paragraph element, or a header element, or a raw text element. Hey, for example, you can do custom CSS, JavaScript, in this element. So for example, if I go back, you see where it says, accessed on this day at this time. If I refresh the page, you can see that updates because that's JavaScript, but it's embedded as a raw text element in this report. So yeah, that's that. There's also these formatting type elements, which is like our horizontal lines as well as page breaks. Let's say you want to print the report out. Well, let's say you want to have these elements on one page these on another page, you can do that with a page break element. I have list elements, I have table elements, I have uh, images and videos, as well as from the previous video in the series, scatter plot elements. So all of those are 
possible elements. And so in this linked list, the first quad word is just, for each, each structure, the first quad word is a pointer to the next element in the linked list. And the last element would just have a, a quad word of zero, a null pointer in this slot. Then the next byte is a number which corresponds to the type of item one through, or I guess zero through 16. And then lastly, you, you may have other things in the structure depending on what type of item that it is. So for text structures, that is elements zero through seven, all you have to do is encode that next element pointer, the type, the number zero through seven, as well as the address of the null terminated string of the text to print in this slot. If you have a format structure, that would be a, a, a line or a page break. There is nothing else to put in besides the address of the next element and the number. For list elements, you're going to have to encode the number of elements as well as the address of each null terminated string in the list. So if you have five elements, you have to encode five quad words down here. I, each of them goes and points toward the string that you want to print. And then table is similar, but you have to have also the rows and the columns. So if you had two rows, three columns, you would need six quad words of, uh, of pointers. For embedding videos and images, I have an embed structure. You have to pass in the pixel width and height, as well as the address of the file that you want to attach. And then from the previous video, we have scatter plots. So for those, um, you'd have to encode the address of the scatter plot structure. So besides that, it's pretty simple, right? It's just a linked list of these elements, and we may add more elements in the future. And the function to generate these report is, is very simple. It's called print HTML, and we can see it in a second where it is. And basically, it's a, a void function and it returns nothing. It just takes in a file descriptor of the file that you want to print this report to, as well as the linked list first element address. So very simple, very straightforward. Uh, now into the actual code. I've already showed you one of the examples. Let me show you the second one before I show you the actual code. So here is a more of an engineering related report. It says deflection of cantilever beam. So if you're a mechanical engineer, you probably have seen this many times. Um, a beam that's kind of attached at the at one wall and being bent with a point load at the tip of the beam has a deflection along its axis, or I guess transverse to the axis of, of this equation, basically where X is the coordinate along the beam, uh, P is the applied load, L is the length of the beam, and EI is bending stiffness, you know, and D is the deflection in the direction of uh, the applied load P. And you can see here, I've just put a list of what those things are, I put a table of the values. And then you can see I've I've done some math, I've I basically evaluated this function at a bunch of points, and I say, well, this is the shape of the beam with these with this load applied at the tip. So yeah, this is an example of a more engineering related report that you might want to generate. Um, so it's not just a matter of, of, of jokes like this one, but you can actually generate valuable reports, which we will in this series. So getting to the actual code, the two examples are in example 15's directory. Let's show you the first one really quick. So if I open up the code, I have to put this in light mode eventually. Um, the only includes that we have for this financial report example are just that print HTML function that I just described, as well as the functions to open and close files. And again, as before, the closing file function is optional, but we're going to use it just to you know follow the rules for once. So first we'll open that file with a given file name. Then we will call the function print HTML with the first 
element in the linked list of the report linked list in RSI. So how does that look? Well, basically you can see here all of this kind of stuff, all these uh, null terminated strings, you can see the last byte is zero in each of these elements. These are things that you saw in the report, right? You can see my, my car, you can see my strawberry plants, you can see uh, the elements in the table, you can see uh, things for the scatter plot. All these things are constituent elements of the linked list structures. And then you can see down here, I have the actual linked list. So here's the first structure in the linked list. It's the title structure. And you can see it encodes um, the title. So if you look at uh, DB1, that corresponds with an H1 element. So that's the title of the report I've selected. And uh, sorry, you can see that it's referring to the address of the null terminated string at address title. And which one is that? It says Q3 2023 financial report. So yeah, basically you just have a linked list down there of all of the elements from the title to the author, to the date accessed, to all the, the lines, all of the lists, all of the tables in the scatter plot. Everything is encoded there as you would expect. And if I run it, it generates, as you can see, a .html file. And that we can open up and we can refresh. And you can see here, the, the time again is updated and this file is generated automatically. The other example is a bit more involved. Um, why is that? Well, it's because it, it involves evaluating that function. It, it involves evaluating this function at 100 some odd points. And so for that, we have to use what we did in the previous video. If you look at example, I think it was 14C, where we evaluated a polynomial. It's a similar process in here, except it's not a polynomial, it's, it's this, which I guess is a polynomial if you think about it, but it's not a nice and simple one. It's, it's kind of a weird looking polynomial. So look in this code. This one has a few more includes. A lot of them are just to support our ability to evaluate that expression. Um, so we have a heap. We have uh, our parametric functions here to evaluate parameters, to create a linear space of a design variable. We have our heap initialization function, allocation functions, as well as that print HTML function that this video is about. Then you can see here we have a function that basically implements that equation. And that function gets evaluated in our evaluate parameters function, which we covered very briefly in the previous video, but I'll cover it in more detail in the future. So ignore that for now if it's confusing. Um, but besides that, it's all pretty much the same stuff. Uh, again, you have uh, bunch of null terminator strings here. And actually one cool thing here is I have a, a math element. Uh, in HTML, there are math elements and you can kind of encode formulas in a not perfect way, but not terrible looking way. You can put exponents, you can put kind of like a cursive looking letters. So it doesn't look terrible, but it's not great. But yeah, you can encode a formula in HTML pretty nicely, which I think is pretty cool and useful for our purposes in this series. And, and yeah, so a bunch of crap like that. Um, I'm not gonna dive too deep into it. It's all there on the suppository. If you're curious, you can take a look. But yes, if you run that code, you will get a cantilever beam.html file. And if you open that file, you will get this. And the beauty of this is, well, what if you wanna change this value? So right now under a thousand pound applied load, you can see it deflects right around negative 0.5. What if we double this applied load? Let's, get, let's go in that function 
and uh, let's change the number. So first things first, let's change the the table element to 2000 and then let's change the actual deflection function value of the applied load to 2000. So now if I run that code and then open, run the binary and open up that report, you'll see that the applied load has doubled in the table and the deflection has doubled as you would expect per the equation in the diagram. And so that's why I think reports are cool is because I can change inputs, rerun the report, get a new set of results, and I can print them out on my printer, I can email them to somebody. It's just a much nicer way to present data than a stupid matrix output to the console window, which is kind of a kind of a cringe thing. So with that out of the way, that's what I wanted to cover in this video. It was a very short video today, but uh, we will leverage this kind of stuff, not in every video, but in some videos in future. So hope you enjoyed. If you did, uh, check the last link in the description and hang out on Discord. So thanks for watching, guys. See ya.